Hello friends, welcome to Thinking on Scripture. My name is Stephen Cook, and today I want to talk about the clothing of the Jewish high priest, that is, of the Jewish high priest who served in ancient Israel. And I have a picture I'm going to uh, work through here in a little bit and show you the various articles of clothing and uh, what the significance was. Uh, but before that, I want to cover some basic points about the priesthood in general. And uh, these points I will include in the description below for any of you that would like to have access to this. And that way you can chase down the scripture references if you want to. First, the Jewish priests functioned as mediators between God and his people. They represented God to the people, and so they were mediators. God required that priests could not have any physical defects. And this because the, the work of the priest was very physically demanding. They had to maintain the tabernacle, the temple. They handled uh, animals, sometimes large animals like sheep and uh, bulls. And so they had to be very physically uh, strong. And they could not have any defects that would impair uh, their ability to do the work, uh, to meet the physical demands of the job. The priesthood was also limited to men between the age of ages of 25 and 50. So there was an age range that one had to be in order to qualify uh, as a priest. Now the priests originally served in the tabernacle and later in the temple. And special clothing was required for the priests and the high priest. And the special clothing was uh, important because when one came into the temple, for example, into the courtyard, if you were just an Israelite bringing an offering, well, you came wearing your normal clothing. But you had to be able to look around and see, well, who is a priest? And they were identified by their white tunics, which got dirty, don't you know? Because the priests uh, were handling animals. They were, uh, there was shedding of blood. There was ashes uh, being next to the, to the altar. And so these, uh, this clothing would have gotten dirty and would have had to have been maintained. I suspect it also smelled like a barbecue every time you came to the tabernacle because of the sacrifices and because of the offerings that were being offered on the altar uh, that were being burned. And so I'm sure it smelled uh, like meat cooking. But again, there was special clothing that was required for the priests and the high priests. Now the priests in general, uh, and the high priest as well, uh, were to be holy in their behavior. They were to provide daily maintenance of the tabernacle, courtyard, and sacrifices. They were to teach God's law to others, which meant that they had to be very, very familiar with the Mosaic Law Code. They were to offer sacrifices for sin to God. They were to adjudicate legal matters, which again meant being very familiar with the Mosaic Law Code. They were to preserve the tabernacle and temple. They were to inspect uh, persons, animals, and fabrics to make sure that they were clean. They were to receive tithes, and they were to pronounce God's blessing on the nation. Now, the high priest in particular really functioned as the supervisor of all the other priests, and he had to be a direct descendant of Aaron. Now, the high priest was to provide divine guidance, and this by means of the Urim and Thummim, also by means of the, of the, of the Word of God itself, of the uh, Mosaic Law Code, and he was to offer sacrifices for sin, both for himself as well as the nation, because the, the high priest was a sinner too. And you can read about this in Leviticus 4, where when the high priest sinned, there was an offering that he was to bring to the Lord. And then also he was to bring an offering for the nation when the nation sinned. And the high priest was also to offer a sacrifice in the Holy of Holies, the Kodesh HaKodeshim, uh, once a year on the Day of Atonement. And this was a once-a-year offering. And so when he came into the temple, for example, you had two parts to the temple. You had the holy place, the first room, which had the menorah, the table of showbread, and the altar of incense. And that was called the holy place. That was the Kodesh. And then you had the veil. And the veil separated the holy place from the holy of holies, the Kodesh of Kodeshim. And so in the holy of holies, you had the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, and so... There was the mercy seat on top of that, and the priest would come in once a year, and he would sprinkle blood on the top of the uh, what was called the mercy seat, or the top of the Ark of the Covenant, and that was a, a once-a-year event. Now let's look at the clothing here. Let's look at the clothing 
of the high priest. First, you have the turban at the top. Now, the turban was white, just like the tunic was white, and that was the basic tunic that was worn by all priests, and this was worn uh, directly against the body. So it was worn against the body. So you have the turban, which was white, and on, uh, on the turban was also a gold plate that read, Holy to the Lord, Holy to the Lord. And this was to remind the high priest constantly that God is holy and that he expects his people to be holy. And so it, w it read, Holy to the Lord. Now you had the white tunic, which again was worn against the body, and the next piece of clothing would have been the blue robe, and this would have been worn over the white tunic. And so the blue robe fit over this, and it was it was sleeveless. It was sleeveless, and it had a gold border uh, uh, down the side and across the bottom. And then on top of the blue robe, you had the ephod, the ephod, and the ephod was really made of the same material as the veil itself that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. And it would have been very, very attractive. It was a beautiful piece of clothing. And it had the colors of blue and purple and scarlet. So again, very attractive uh, piece of clothing. And there was a front part of the ephod and a back part. And the front and the back were connected with these two onyx stones. That's what secured the back part of the ephod with the front part of the ephod. And on these two stones would have been the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, six names on one stone and six names on the other stone. So the priest would have been able to look down to his left or look down to his right, and he would have seen the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. And this would have been very familiar to him. Because, again, he represents the nation to God. And so it would be very personal. It would almost be like having the names of one's loved ones uh, written out on these stones. So, again, it was that visual reminder here. And uh, on the, and then there was also the sash, which came around at the midsection. And this also helps secure uh, the front and the back of the ephod. So you had the sash. And then you had the breast piece. Now, the breast piece went on the front of the ephod, and it folded up on itself. If you look at the picture, it folded up on itself, and it formed a pocket. And this was sometimes called the breast piece of judgment or the breast piece of decision, because inside this pocket, there were the Urim and the Thummim. Now, there's been a lot of speculation. We don't have much detail on what the Urim and Thummim were. Some think it was two stones, like a black and a white stone. Again, we can't be dogmatic. But apparently, uh, the Urim and the Thummim were used uh, to decide important matters. Maybe judicial matters, maybe military matters. Maybe if the nation was going to war, they, would, they could come and, and they could consult the high priest and he could consult the Lord and then reach in and pull out either the Urim or the Thummim, which is thought to mean basically a, a yes or a no. Again, can't be dogmatic on this, but these were stored inside this pocket of the breast piece, which again folded up on itself. And then on the front of the breast piece were 12 stones uh, with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Again, very beautiful. And then at the bottom, at the bottom down here, we have the bells and pomegranates, which would have been at the very bottom of the robe. And these would have alternated. It would have been a bell, a pomegranate, a bell, a pomegranate, a bell, a pomegranate, and so on. And uh, this would have made noise. So when the priest walked about, you would have heard the jingling, jingling, jingling. And so the garment of the high priest was not only very aesthetically attractive, it was very beautiful, but it was also a little bit noisy. And so it would have drawn attention to him. Again, he would have been able, you would have picked him out among the priests who were functioning, again, either at the tabernacle originally or later at the temple. So hopefully this lesson has been helpful to you and you've enjoyed this. And I thank you very much and I wish you a good day.